Samuel Smith was a man with calloused hands and sun-marked skin, a true son of the land. Born and raised in the countryside, he knew every corner of his farm like the back of his hand. The land was his life, and farming was his passion. The green fields stretched as far as the eye could see, and the smell of wet earth after the rain was the scent he loved most. Samuel lived there alongside his wife, Rachel, a woman with a gentle smile and eyes that sparkled like the clear summer sky. They had married young, driven by a love that grew along with the corn in the fields, and their days were filled with the hard work of the farm, but also with simple, genuine happiness. Rachel's laughter echoed through the wooden house every morning, and Samuel always said it was the sound that motivated him to get up before the sun to start the day's work. The news of Rachel's pregnancy came on a quiet afternoon as the sun was beginning to set on the horizon. Samuel was fixing a fence when Rachel came running with flushed cheeks and a gleam in her eyes. Sam, I... I'm pregnant, she said breathless, with a smile that lit up her face. Samuel immediately dropped his tools and his eyes filled with tears of joy. He hugged her tightly, feeling his heart pounding in his chest. Rachel, this is... This is the best gift God could give us. The months passed, and when they finally discovered the baby would be a boy, Samuel and Rachel sat on the porch of their house, under the starry sky, discussing names. I've always liked strong names, Rachel said, caressing her belly, where the little one was moving slowly. Samuel looked out at the horizon, thoughtful, before responding in a soft voice. How about Vincent? In memory of my father. He was a good man, Rachel. Strong, just. I think he would be honored. Rachel smiled, taking Samuel's hand. Vincent Smith, it's perfect. Our son will carry the name of a great man. Under the stars that night, the future of little Vincent was sealed, with a name that would carry his grandfather's legacy and the unconditional love of his parents. After Vincent's birth, Samuel's life changed in a way he had never imagined. He had always believed that his mission on earth was to work the farm, cultivate the fields, and ensure his family had enough to live. But holding his son in his arms for the first time, something new awakened in his heart, an uncontrollable desire to offer little Vincent a different future, one that went beyond the limits of the farm. One quiet night while rocking Vincent to sleep, Samuel turned to Rachel, who was sitting in the rocking chair beside him, watching the two with a loving gaze. Rachel, he began with a tone of voice that betrayed the seriousness of his thoughts. I've been thinking, I want to start studying, not for me, but for our son's future. I want him to have more options, more opportunities than I had. Rachel looked at him surprised, but soon a supportive smile formed on her lips. Study? Sam, you already do so much for us. Are you sure you can balance that with the farm work? Samuel nodded, determined. I can, Rachel. I've been saving some money since your pregnancy, thinking of something bigger, something that will allow us to give Vincent a better life. I'm going to enroll in a business course in town. I know it will be hard, but if I learn about business, I can do more than just plant and harvest. I can create something that ensures our son's future, that opens doors I never imagined. Rachel, her eyes shining with pride, placed her hand over his. I believe in you, Sam. If anyone can do it, it's you. And I'll be here, taking care of Vincent and the farm while you focus on your studies. And so, with Rachel's unwavering support and his eyes set on his son's future, Samuel began his journey into the world of business. Using the money he had carefully saved, he enrolled in night classes, attending college after a long day of work in the fields. Tired, but driven by a greater purpose, he dedicated himself to the classes with the same determination he had for tending the land, knowing that every concept learned every theory absorbed was a step toward the future he dreamed of for Vincent. In the final years of his studies, Samuel's life took an unexpected and painful turn. Rachel, who had always been the steadfast rock by his side, began to show signs of fatigue and weakness that were not typical. At first, she insisted it was just the wear and tear of caring for the farm and Vincent, but Samuel noticed something different in her eyes, something he couldn't shake from his thoughts. Rachel, you need to see a doctor, Samuel said, concerned one morning when he saw her hesitate to get out of bed. He approached her, holding her hand, and noticed how cold it was. 
This isn't just exhaustion. I feel like there's something more. Rachel tried to smile, but the effort left her even paler. Sam, don't worry so much. I'm strong. I'll get through this, she replied, trying to calm him. But deep down, she knew something was wrong. However, out of love for her husband and son, she continued to postpone the doctor's visit until the illness finally showed its face in a cruel and relentless way. When the doctors finally diagnosed Rachel, the news was devastating. The illness was severe and progressing rapidly. The days that followed were a whirlwind of emotions for Samuel. Between classes and working on the farm, he rushed to the hospital, doing his best to be by Rachel's side and take care of Vincent, who, at seven years old, didn't fully understand the gravity of the situation but felt the weight of the sadness that hung over the house. On a quiet night, while Samuel was sitting by Rachel's side in the hospital, she held his hand with surprising strength for someone in her condition. Sam, promise me you'll keep going. Continue with your studies, take care of Vincent, and don't let this pain stop you from moving forward, she whispered, her voice weak but full of determination. Samuel's eyes filled with tears, but he nodded, squeezing her hand as if trying to convey all the strength he had. I promise, Rachel, I'll keep going for you and for our son. A few days later, Rachel passed away, leaving an immense void in Samuel and Vincent's lives. The pain was overwhelming, and for a moment, Samuel felt like everything he had fought for was crumbling. But Rachel's words echoed in his mind, giving him the strength he needed to carry on. Now more than ever, he had to be strong for himself and especially for Vincent, who depended on him to navigate that sea of sadness and uncertainty. Despite the grief, Samuel returned to his classes with renewed determination. The nights were lonely, the empty space in the bed a constant reminder of Rachel's absence, but he stayed focused. Every lesson learned, every page studied, was a tribute to Rachel's wish to see her family thrive. After years of sacrifice and perseverance, Samuel finally achieved the long-awaited graduation. On the day of the ceremony, he donned the academic gown with a mix of pride and sadness. Pride for having accomplished something that seemed unattainable when he began this journey, and sadness because Rachel was not by his side to celebrate this moment. As he left the auditorium, diploma in hand, he looked up to the sky and whispered, We did it, Rachel. I did this for you, for us. Shortly after graduation, Samuel wasted no time. Utilizing the connections he had cultivated during his years of study, he began seeking opportunities in the business market. The field was competitive, but he possessed the determination and life experience needed to overcome any challenges that came his way. On a sweltering afternoon, while organizing some documents in his small country house, Samuel received a phone call that would change his life. An old college friend, now well-positioned in a large company, offered him a spot in a high-potential project. Samuel, I saw how dedicated you were in college. We have a position here for someone with your profile. I know you can make a difference, said the voice on the other end of the line. Samuel accepted the offer without hesitation, feeling that this was the first big step toward the future he had always dreamed of for Vincent. With his entry into the business world, Samuel quickly proved his worth. His problem-solving ability, combined with the work ethic he brought from his farming days, impressed his superiors and colleagues. In no time, he began to thrive, making strategic investments and decisions that increased the company's profits. Each new success was a victory not only for him, but also for the legacy he was building for his son. When he turned 30, Samuel looked at his bank statement and saw something that once seemed like a distant dream his first million. The feeling of accomplishment was indescribable, but he knew that this was only the beginning. With financial security, he began planning the next step for his family. Samuel and Vincent's lives changed drastically when they decided to leave the small country house behind. Vincent, we're moving, Samuel announced one evening during dinner. The boy, now 12 years old, looked at his father with curiosity. Where to, Dad? he asked with a mix of excitement and apprehension. To the city, son, I've secured a new house for us, a big house where you'll have everything you need to grow and study, Samuel replied, trying to hide the melancholy he felt thinking about the farm they would leave behind. The luxurious mansion in the city was everything Samuel had dreamed of for Vincent. 
With spacious halls, well-maintained gardens, and an imposing architecture, the new home represented the culmination of years of effort and dedication. This is our new life, Vincent. Here, you'll have the opportunities I never had, Samuel said as they walked together through the mansion's corridors. However, behind all the luxury and comfort, the real challenge was just beginning. Raising Vincent in an environment so different from what he knew, without losing the values he had learned in the countryside. For Samuel, beyond success, wealth was a tool to ensure that his son had the best possible future. Despite the financial success Samuel had achieved, he soon found himself trapped in a dilemma he hadn't expected. The intense pace of the business world demanded more and more of his time and energy. Endless meetings, contracts to review, last-minute trips, all of it began to consume what was once reserved for his family life. When he finally came home exhausted, he barely had the strength for more than a nod or a brief word with Vincent before retreating to his room. Vincent, now in his teens, deeply felt his father's absence. He had lost his mother at a very young age, and with Samuel now almost always absent, the mansion, luxurious as it was, seemed cold and empty. During the nights while Samuel was away or resting, Vincent often found himself alone in his room, staring at the walls covered with posters of cars and football players, wondering if he would ever have the kind of relationship with his father that he saw other boys at school enjoying. The mansion where Vincent lived was grand, a true fortress of luxury with spacious halls, marble staircases, and impeccably maintained gardens. However, all this opulence only accentuated the young man's loneliness. The staff, always ready to attend to his needs, seemed more like distant figures than part of his life. The housekeepers, with their polite smiles and restrained gestures, ensured the house remained in perfect order. The tutors, hired to oversee his education, accompanied him in his daily lessons, but were nothing more than mere instructors, unable to offer the affection and attention he so desperately longed for. As time passed, Vincent began to realize that everyone around him, no matter how competent and helpful, couldn't fill the void left by his father's absence. On a sweltering afternoon, while walking through the silent corridors of the mansion, Vincent found himself alone once again. He ran his fingers along the gilded railings, his gaze fixed on the expensive tapestries adorning the walls, feeling the weight of the loneliness growing in his chest. He stopped in front of a window, staring at the horizon without really seeing it, and murmured to himself, What's the point of having all this if I don't have my father around? This silent anguish began to change him. The lack of direction and the feeling of abandonment led Vincent, still in his teens, to seek attention in other ways. He realized that by breaking the rules, by challenging the authority of his tutors, and by ignoring the housekeeper's instructions, he could at least get a bit of what he most desired, to be noticed. At first, it was small acts of rebellion, skipping classes, speaking rudely to the staff, leaving the house without telling anyone. However, the need to push boundaries grew along with his frustration, leading him to take more and more risky actions. The housekeepers exchanged worried glances, and the tutors found themselves lost, unable to control the young man who was quickly straying from the path his father had worked so hard to build. Vincent, you need to stop this. Your father would be very disappointed if he knew. One of the housekeepers tried to advise him one night as he prepared to leave without a clear destination. Disappointed? How could he be disappointed when he doesn't even know what's happening in my life? Vincent replied, bitterness in his voice. He cast one last look at the housekeeper, who recoiled at the coldness in his eyes and left, slamming the door behind him. The mansion, no matter how big and rich, could no longer contain Vincent's restlessness. Each act of rebellion was a silent cry for attention, for a father who, in the midst of financial success, had become a distant shadow. The house, filled with luxury, was becoming increasingly empty of meaning for the young man, who was beginning to lose himself in his own search for identity and purpose. At 25 years old, Vincent had become a man who reflected both the luxury and the absence in which he was raised. His increasingly reckless behavior became a reflection of a life marked by emotional deprivation. Vincent's nights were a constant parade of excess. He attended extravagant parties at exclusive clubs where alcohol flowed like water 
and the deafening sound of music drowned out any thoughts about the reality he was avoiding. On the streets, Vincent was known for his participation in illegal races, where the risk and adrenaline made him feel alive, even if only for brief moments. The roar of engines and the smell of burnt rubber became his escape, a way to distance himself from the mansion that, despite all its luxury, was for him an empty place, devoid of meaning. One early morning after one of these races, Vincent arrived home drunk, his unsteady steps echoing through the silent corridors. The housekeepers, who were used to these furtive entries, exchanged worried glances but knew that any attempt to speak with him would be futile. Vincent, you need to stop this. This isn't going to get you anywhere, one of the housekeepers, with an anguished expression, dared to say the next morning when she found Vincent in the kitchen, still reeking of alcohol. Vincent, with puffy eyes and a throbbing hangover, merely shook his head in disdain. Don't tell me what to do, he replied, his voice rough, not hiding his irritation. You're not my mother, and you're not my father. I'll do whatever I want. His words were like a barrier he erected to protect himself, but the housekeepers knew that behind this arrogant facade was a lost young man trying to cope with the pain of a life where absence was his only constant companion. They understood that Vincent's behavior was a desperate attempt to fill the void left by the lack of a present father figure, but no one dared to confront Samuel with this reality. The weight of silence was heavy, and the housekeepers, fearing the possible consequences, preferred not to reveal the true extent of Vincent's problems. Instead, they cared for Vincent as best they could, hoping that somehow he would find his way. Every morning after another night of excess, they cleaned up the traces of his personal destruction, leaving the house spotless as if nothing had happened. But they knew in their hearts that Vincent's problem was deeper than any stain they could remove, and that without Samuel's intervention, that self-destructive cycle would continue to spin, pulling Vincent further away from the man his father hoped he would become. Despite being neck deep in his business, Samuel was not unaware of Vincent's behavior. He knew through small comments and discreet observations that his son was straying further and further from the path he had envisioned for him. Although the housekeepers had never made a direct complaint, Samuel noticed the signs, the deep dark circles under Vincent's eyes, the bloodshot eyes of someone who hadn't slept all night, the rumors that reached him through friends and acquaintances about his son's wild lifestyle. Deep down, Samuel carried a silent guilt. One night he found himself reflecting on the direction things had taken. What have I done, Rachel? He murmured to himself, as if he could still talk to the wife he missed so much. I wanted so badly to give Vincent what I never had, but is this what ruined him? The wealth Samuel had accumulated over the years, although it provided comfort and security, had also created an invisible barrier between him and Vincent. The abundance of resources had made his son's life too easy, without real challenges, without the hard lessons that shape character. The memory of his own childhood, marked by hard work on the farm, by sweat and difficulties, made him feel a twinge of bitterness. If he had grown up like I did, dealing with the land, facing hardships, maybe he would have learned to value what truly matters. These thoughts would not leave him in peace. The idea that he might have lost the chance to save Vincent from the grips of self-sufficiency and excess tormented him. He feared that time had slipped through his fingers like sand, that Vincent was already too far gone to be reached by mere words. The restlessness grew in his chest until an idea began to take shape in his mind. A bold idea, but one that he believed was the only way to rescue his son from the spiral he was caught in. Maybe, maybe what Vincent needs is a reality check. Something that makes him see the world as it really is, he murmured to himself. Determined, Samuel felt a weight lift from his shoulders. His plan would be risky and Vincent might resist, but he was willing to try. He needed to do something before it was too late. With this renewed conviction, Samuel began to outline the details of his plan, determined to give Vincent one last chance to find the right path. On a sunny afternoon, Vincent was on one of his usual escapades through the city, immersed in his habit of spending money on anything that caught his eye, from designer clothes to extravagant dinners. The sensation of swiping his credit card, knowing that the limit was practically infinite, always brought him a hollow but instant satisfaction. He had just chosen an outrageously expensive watch at a luxury boutique, 
a piece he would likely wear once or twice before forgetting it in some corner of the mansion. When the cashier swiped the card, however, the machine beeped in alert. The clerk, a middle-aged man with a practiced smile, looked at the screen, frowning. Sir, it seems the transaction was declined, he said, trying to hide the surprise in his voice. Vincent raised his eyebrows, incredulous. Declined? That must be a mistake, Vincent replied, his tone a mix of impatience and disbelief. Try it again. The clerk nodded, running the card a second time, but the result was the same. I'm sorry, sir, but the payment wasn't authorized. Confusion overtook Vincent. Never in his life had he encountered something like this. This makes no sense, he muttered, pulling his phone from his pocket and immediately dialing his father's number. The phone rang several times, but no one answered. A feeling of unease began to settle in his chest, something he hadn't felt in a long time, the sensation of being out of control. Vincent put the phone away with a brusque motion, ignoring the curious look from the clerk. I'll sort this out later, he said with a distracted wave, quickly leaving the store. As he walked to the parking lot, his mind spun with possibilities that had never crossed his mind. Why isn't my father answering? And why was the card declined? He thought, trying to make sense of the situation. He got into his sports car and started the engine with a roar. The feeling of power that usually filled him when driving that car was now overshadowed by growing anxiety. This has never happened before. What the hell is going on? He murmured to himself as he sped through the city streets, his foot pressing down harder on the accelerator than usual. The drive back to the mansion seemed longer and more uncomfortable than usual. Every traffic light, every turn seemed to delay him even more. The only thing on his mind was confronting his father and finding out what was going on. Vincent was determined to understand why, suddenly, his world of comfort and excess had been shaken. When Vincent finally arrived at the mansion, something immediately felt wrong. The main gate, which usually opened automatically upon detecting his car, was locked, forcing him to stop abruptly. He frowned, stepping out of the car with quick strides, and that's when he noticed the strange scene in front of him. The house staff were all outside, gathered in small groups, murmuring to each other, with expressions of concern he had never seen before. What's going on here? Vincent muttered to himself as he crossed the garden toward the main entrance. The air was tense, as if something terrible had happened. As he approached one of the housekeepers, a middle-aged woman who had always treated him with a mix of respect and affection, stepped forward nervously. Mr. Vincent, she began, her voice trembling slightly. I, I'm sorry, but I don't know exactly what happened. The mansion has been sealed off by the authorities. Your father, he asked me to give this to you she said, extending a sealed letter with Vincent's name handwritten on the front. Vincent took the letter with a mixture of disbelief and confusion. Sealed off? For what? he asked, but the housekeeper only shook her head, unable to provide an answer. This doesn't make any sense, he murmured, his eyes fixed on the envelope. Feeling a strange sense of urgency, Vincent moved away from the curious gazes of the staff and walked to a more secluded corner of the garden where he used to spend Sunday afternoons reading or simply watching the horizon. With trembling hands, he broke the seal and pulled out the letter. Vincent began to read the letter, his eyes scanning each line with a mix of disbelief and growing anxiety. His father's handwriting, usually so familiar and comforting, now seemed to carry an enormous weight, each word a revelation he was not prepared to face. My dear son Vincent, the letter began, I know this may seem sudden and frightening, but I need you to stay calm. The truth is I'm in hiding. I was the victim of a tax scam perpetrated by one of my partners, someone I trusted for years. The IRS is on to us, and all our assets are being seized, including your car. Vincent paused for a moment, feeling a lump form in his throat. He had always believed his father was untouchable, an almost mythological figure who controlled every aspect of their lives with precision and power. Now. Confronted with this reality, he felt the ground disappear beneath his feet. Don't worry, the letter continued. There is a plan. The old farm where you spent the first years of your life is still there, untouched and safe. I want you to go there and take shelter while I try to resolve this situation. 
The farm may not be the luxury you're used to, but it will be a safe place for you while I fight to regain everything. Trust me, Vincent, the letter concluded. Everything I did was to protect you and ensure our future. Now I need you to do your part. I promise everything will be okay. After finishing the letter, Vincent felt a wave of despair and disbelief. Still in shock, his first reaction was to seek support from the people he had believed were his friends until that moment. He grabbed his phone and began calling his usual party companions, those who had always been by his side during moments of fun. With each call, however, reality became more bitter. Hey man, I'm in trouble, I need help. Can I stay at your place for a while? Vincent asked one of his closest friends, someone he was sure would lend a hand. On the other end of the line, there was an uncomfortable pause before the response. Ah, Vincent, you know how it is. My house is full right now. My sister came to visit with the kids and... I don't think it's possible, man. Maybe some other time. Vincent hung up, feeling a pang of frustration. He tried again, calling another friend. I'm in a tough spot. I need a place to stay for a few days, he explained, his voice revealing the urgency he felt. This time, the response was even colder. Look, Vincent, you know how it is, right? Things are a bit complicated here. I can't help you. One by one, the calls turned into evasive excuses or outright refusals. With each no, Vincent felt the ground beneath him crumble a little more. The truth was painful and undeniable. His friends were only around when he had something to offer, when life was easy and full of pleasures. Now that he needed help, he was alone. Still holding the phone, Vincent looked out at the horizon, his mind in turmoil. The mansion, the wealth, the luxuries, none of it meant anything anymore. With a heavy heart and a clouded mind, he realized that he had nowhere to go, no one he could really trust. The only option left was to follow his father's instructions, the last person who still believed in him, even if from a distance. After a few minutes, Vincent made his decision. He walked to the nearest bus station, the sound of his footsteps echoing on the sidewalk, reflecting the emptiness he felt. When he reached the station, he bought a ticket with the little money he had in his pocket and settled into one of the bus seats, his thoughts racing as the vehicle prepared to depart. As the bus began to move, Vincent looked out the window, watching the city lights he knew so well start to fade into the distance. He didn't know what awaited him at the farm, but something inside him perhaps a spark of hope or a desperate need to find a new path, was pushing him forward. The road was long and uncertain, but Vincent knew there was no turning back. As the bus slowly pulled away from the city, leaving behind the shimmering lights and superficial glow of the life Vincent had known, the housekeepers at the mansion exchanged worried glances filled with silent complicity. One of them, the oldest and most experienced, gave a subtle nod, signaling to someone waiting in the shadows of the main entrance. A few seconds later, Samuel emerged from inside the mansion. His expression was a mixture of tension and hope, like a man who had staked everything on a risky plan. He watched the bus disappear, his heart heavy but resolute. He's gone, he said quietly, more to himself than to the women beside him. One of the housekeepers, the one who had handed Vincent the letter, couldn't hide her concern and approached Samuel. Sir, are you sure this was necessary? Sending him away like this? To the farm? Don't you think you could have tried talking to him, resolving things differently? Samuel turned to her, his eyes reflecting the weight of the decisions he had made. I thought about that so many times, he replied, his voice laden with exhaustion. But every attempt to talk to Vincent was in vain. He was so lost, so trapped in that world of excess that words weren't enough. He needed a reality check, something to make him see beyond the bubble he's been living in. The housekeeper hesitated, doubt still etched on her face. But what if he doesn't understand? What if he feels betrayed? Samuel sighed deeply, running his hand over his face. I know there are risks, but I saw no other way. He might feel betrayed at first, maybe even hate me for it. But I'd rather he hate me now and become a better man than continue down this destructive path that would only lead him to ruin. The silence that followed was heavy, full of uncertainties. The housekeepers knew that Samuel was risking everything, betting that the farm, that simple place full of memories, could reconnect Vincent with something deeper, 
something he had lost amidst the luxury and emptiness of his current life. I just hope he understands someday, Samuel murmured, his eyes still fixed on the horizon where the bus had disappeared. I hope he sees that all of this was done out of love, not cruelty. Now, everything depended on how Vincent would handle the reality awaiting him at the farm, far from all the distractions that had once dominated his life. When the bus finally stopped on the small dirt road leading to the farm, Vincent disembarked with a mix of fatigue and reluctance. The familiar smell of wet earth and the distant sounds of animals immediately enveloped him, bringing back memories he had long forgotten. In front of him, the farm stretched out in all its rustic simplicity, a modest house surrounded by green fields and a barn that seemed to have withstood the test of time. Vincent took a deep breath and walked toward the main house, where the caretaker, a sturdy man with a gentle demeanor, was already waiting on the porch. The caretaker, who had worked on the farm for years, smiled as he saw Vincent approach, but also noticed the unease in the young man. You must be Vincent, he said, extending his hand in a welcoming gesture. I'm John, the caretaker. Your father told me you'd be coming. Vincent shook John's hand, noting the firmness and honesty in the grip. Yeah, my father sent me here, he replied, his voice unable to hide the mix of confusion and resentment he felt. He said I should stay here for a while. John nodded, sensing Vincent's internal conflict. Well, it's not like the city here, but it's a peaceful place. Let me show you around, John said, signaling for Vincent to follow him. They walked together around the property with John explaining the details of what had been done there over the years. The fields are in good condition, John began, pointing to the vast green horizon. The land is good, fertile, and has been well cared for. Your father always made sure of that, even after he moved to the city. As they walked, Vincent observed the place with eyes trying to adjust to the new reality. Every detail highlighted how different this world was compared to the luxury of the city. The worn wooden fences, the smell of freshly cut grass, the sounds of chickens pecking in the yard, everything was so simple, so unpretentious. He felt out of place, as if he had been ripped from his comfort zone and thrown into a world he barely recognized. You know, your father always talked about how this place shaped him, John continued as he opened the barn door for Vincent to take a look. He believed that the hard work here made him who he is. Maybe he wants you to see that for yourself. Vincent looked around, trying to imagine his father as a young man, working in that same barn, sweating and striving to build a different life. The idea seemed distant, almost surreal. He never talked much about it, Vincent murmured more to himself than to John. John closed the barn door and looked directly at Vincent, sensing the young man's uncertainty. Maybe this is the place where you'll discover something about yourself too, he said with a simple but profound wisdom. Vincent felt the weight of the caretaker's words and looked at the simple house in front of him, realizing that at that moment, he had no choice but to accept the reality surrounding him. That humble place would have to be his home for the next few days, maybe weeks, and there, far from everything he knew, he would have to learn to live with a completely new life. In the first few days on the farm, Vincent felt like a fish out of water. The new reality was harsh and unsettling. He locked himself in the room that had been assigned to him, a simple space with rustic furniture and windows that let in the smell of the earth and the distant sound of animals. Everything there seemed strange, almost hostile, Removed from the comforts he had always known, Vincent refused to accept the idea that this could be his home, even temporarily. On the rare occasions he left the room, it was only for meals. During those times, he would meet with John, the caretaker, in the small kitchen of the main house. The table, made of worn wood, was always set with simple but carefully prepared dishes. John, aware of Vincent's state of mind, never forced a conversation but his calm presence and few words offered a kind of companionship that Vincent was not accustomed to. One morning, while slicing a piece of homemade bread, John observed Vincent, who was lost in thought, staring out the window. You know, Vincent, when I was young, I also struggled to accept my life here, John commented in a gentle but inviting tone. Vincent shifted his gaze from the window and looked at John, curious but still reluctant to open up. Really? And why did you stay? He asked unable to hide the skepticism in his voice. John smiled slightly, 
as if recognizing that same skepticism he had once felt. I stayed because over time I realized there's a certain peace in living simply. At first everything seemed monotonous, purposeless, but gradually I started to see the value in small things. Waking up with the sun, smelling the earth after the rain, knowing that the work of my hands has a direct impact on what we harvest. Vincent listened to the words, and although he didn't want to admit it, something in what John said resonated within him. During the following meals, the conversations continued, always discreet but increasingly deeper. John spoke of how life on the farm taught lessons that couldn't be learned elsewhere, patience, resilience, the value of constant effort. He told stories of times past, of how the farm had survived droughts and harsh winters, and how each season brought new challenges and new hopes. It's not an easy life, John said once while spreading butter on his bread, but it's a life that teaches. It teaches you to value what you have, to appreciate the things that really matter. These words began to penetrate the barrier that Vincent had built around himself. He still spent most of his time isolated, but on nights when darkness fell and the only light came from the stars and the sky, he found himself thinking about the stories John had told. Over time, the conversations with John began to have an unexpected influence on Vincent. The stories and lessons shared by the caretaker, which initially seemed distant and irrelevant, started to take root in Vincent's mind. One morning he woke up with a different feeling, a curiosity that drove him to leave his room and explore what lay beyond the walls of the house. Vincent found John in the stable, busy with the daily chores. Need help with that? he asked, trying to sound casual even though the offer of help was a significant step for him. John looked up, surprised, but quickly hit it with a welcoming smile. Sure, Vincent. There's always something to do around here. Why don't you start by feeding the chickens? It's a simple task, but an important one. Vincent nodded, feeling a strange mix of apprehension and determination. He grabbed a bucket of feed and followed John to the chicken coop. The chicken scratched at the dirt, and when they saw the bucket, they flocked around Vincent, who hesitated for a moment before starting to spread the feed. The work was simple, almost mechanical, but there was a certain peace in the act of feeding the animals, something Vincent couldn't quite explain. In the days that followed, Vincent began to involve himself more in the farm's activities, each day taking on a new task. You can try milking the cows today if you want, John suggested one afternoon as they herded the cattle back to the stable. It's not as complicated as it seems. Vincent accepted the challenge, though with some insecurity. Sitting on the stool beside the cow, he began the process, watching John's calm and precise movements before mimicking them. Vincent's hands, accustomed to handling only sports car steering wheels and drinking glasses, now worked with the rough, warm hide of the animal. The rhythmic sound of the milk hitting the bucket was oddly soothing, and for the first time in a long time, Vincent felt a strange sense of satisfaction. You're doing well, Vincent, John praised, watching him with a look that mixed pride and surprise. Believe me, everything we do here has a purpose. And you're starting to understand that. These words echoed in Vincent's mind as he continued to work, taking on each new task with a care and dedication he hadn't known he possessed. Planting seeds, fixing fences, even sweeping the barn floor, these small actions began to shape something new within him. The initial resistance gave way to a sense of accomplishment he had never experienced at the parties and in the excesses of the city. Each completed task brought a small triumph, another step in the journey of rediscovering who he was and what he could be. As the days turned into weeks, the simple tasks Vincent initially took on began to become part of a routine that he, to his own surprise, started to appreciate. Over time, John noticed that Vincent was ready for greater challenges, and one day, while inspecting the pasture fence, the caretaker suggested something different. Vincent, this fence needs repairs, John said, pointing to the loose and worn boards. I think you're ready to handle it. Let's work on the renovation together. Vincent looked at the fence with evaluating eyes, something he had never done before. He felt a strange satisfaction as he picked up the tools and began replacing the old boards with new ones. With each hammer strike, he felt the weight of responsibility, but also a growing sense of achievement. It wasn't just mechanical work, it was work that required patience, precision, and dedication. 
things he was beginning to understand were essential for a life with purpose. As the weeks passed, Vincent found himself involved in more than just simple repairs. He began helping with the planting, plowing the soil under the scorching sun, feeling the physical effort of work that demanded much more than he was used to. Pulling the plow is hard work, John commented as he watched Vincent work, but it's the kind of work that strengthens you, both in body and mind. Sweat dripped down Vincent's forehead, and his muscles ached in ways he had never experienced, but at the same time he felt something awakening inside him, the soil beneath his boots, the smell of freshly cut grass, and the sight of the green fields around him. All of it felt more real, more tangible than anything he had lived before. Then one day, while milking the cows alongside John, Vincent found himself reflecting on how much he had changed. The hard work had truly transformed his body, his arms were stronger, his posture more firm, and it had also transformed his mind. He was beginning to see value in effort, in the quiet dedication that farm work required. It's funny, Vincent said, almost laughing to himself as the milk dripped into the bucket, how something so simple can have so much meaning. John, smiling, nodded in agreement. The true meaning of life lies in the small actions we build day by day. That's what gives us purpose. These words resonated deeply with Vincent. He was rediscovering a new sense of purpose, one that wasn't rooted in luxury or the approval of others, but in the intrinsic value of honest work. As the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, Vincent began to experience something that had long eluded him, genuine satisfaction in his daily accomplishments. Each task completed, no matter how simple, brought him a feeling of pride and achievement. He was surprised by how much he was connecting to the farm's routine, finding pleasure in activities that once would have seemed tedious. One sunny afternoon after finishing repairs on the barn roof, Vincent sat down in the shade of a tree observing the field around him. The silence was filled only by the gentle sounds of nature, the rustling of leaves, the distant song of birds. He took a deep breath, feeling a peace he hadn't experienced in a long time. I never thought I could feel this way here, he murmured to himself, a slight smile curving his lips. John, who had become more than just a mentor but a friend, approached and sat beside Vincent. That's the kind of satisfaction you only find in honest work, in simplicity, he said, looking out at the horizon. Here, you can see the results of your effort. Every crop that grows, every repair that's made, is a testament to what you're capable of doing with your own hands. Vincent nodded, sensing the truth in John's words. He began to realize that the luxury of life in the city had never given him this sense of purpose. I never imagined I could find something so meaningful in such a simple life, Vincent confessed, more to himself than to John. As Vincent found his way on the farm, Samuel Smith, his father, watched from afar. The worry that had initially haunted him was slowly being replaced by a feeling of hope. Samuel kept in constant contact with John, exchanging discreet text messages to stay informed about his son's progress. How is he today? Samuel asked in a message, waiting anxiously for the response. He's doing well, sir, John replied. More involved each day. I think he's starting to understand the value of work and simplicity. These responses brought relief to Samuel's heart. Although he kept his distance, fearing that his presence might disrupt Vincent's progress, he knew the plan was working. The farm, with its demands and rewards, was shaping his son in a way he could never have imagined. Sitting in his office in the city, Samuel looked at John's latest message, a slight smile touching his lips. Maybe it's working, he thought, feeling a mix of relief and pride. Although there was still a long way to go for the first time in a long time, Vincent was finding something that money could never buy, a true sense of purpose and the peace that comes with it. A year had passed since Vincent arrived at the farm, and the place had undergone a remarkable transformation, much of which was a direct result of his effort and dedication. The young man who once refused to accept his new reality was now deeply involved in every aspect of rural life, learning the skills necessary to maintain the farm and mastering the art of managing it with intelligence and vision. One morning as he walked through the fields alongside John, Vincent observed with satisfaction the rows of plants growing vigorously under the sun. I remember when I first got here, Vincent commented, his eyes scanning the lush horizon. 
I had no idea how things worked. Now sorting what's for consumption and what's for sale feels almost natural. John smiled, proud of the progress Vincent had made. You've learned quickly, Vincent. More than that, you've understood that every detail matters, from choosing the seeds to knowing the right time to harvest. This farm wouldn't be thriving the way it is without your hard work. Vincent nodded, reflecting on how much he had changed, both in knowledge and in character. He now took care of the farm as if it were his own, dedicating himself to each task with a sense of responsibility that was previously unknown to him. He had learned to manage resources wisely, ensuring that production was both efficient and sustainable. The chicken coop, for example, was fully operational, with fresh eggs collected daily and distributed between personal consumption and sales. The same went for the cow's milk, which Vincent now knew exactly how to process and store to maximize profits. The transformation of the farm was visible in both the fields and the finances. Profits began to rise, and with them, Vincent felt a growing sense of confidence, a pride that came from the realization of a job well done. He began making plans for the farm's future, discussing with John ways to expand production, improve facilities, and even diversify the crops. I've been thinking, Vincent said as they walked back to the house, we could invest in some new technologies for the farm. That could boost our productivity even more and allow us to expand into new markets. John looked at Vincent with a satisfied smile. You've got good ideas, Vincent. The farm is thriving like never before, and that's thanks to your dedication. What we're building here goes beyond sustaining a business. We're creating something lasting, something that reaches far beyond what we could have imagined. Vincent now saw the farm as a legacy he had helped revitalize. Every decision he made, every effort he put forth, contributed to the success of the place and to his own growth as a person. The responsibility that once seemed overwhelming was now a burden he carried with pride, knowing that he was making a difference. Vincent had learned to appreciate the value of every small achievement, of every challenge overcome. The farm was flourishing, and with it, Vincent was also thriving, finding purpose and satisfaction in simplicity and hard work, something he never imagined possible when he was immersed in the superficial luxury of the city. Eager to confirm with his own eyes the changes John had been describing in his updates, Samuel decided it was time to pay a surprise visit to the farm. The messages exchanged over the past year had always brought positive news. John reported on Vincent's progress how he had taken on responsibilities and transformed the farm into something more prosperous than it had ever been. But despite John's words, Samuel needed to see for himself how much his son had changed. One sunny afternoon, Samuel quickly packed his things, deciding he would wait no longer. The thought of reuniting with Vincent as a responsible and determined man made his heart race. The journey seemed long, but the anticipation made time drag on agonizingly slowly. As he drove along the winding roads leading to the farm, Samuel found himself imagining what the reunion would be like. Has he really changed as much as John says? He wondered, a mix of anxiety and hope filling his thoughts. He knew that Vincent had undergone a transformation, but he wanted to see, feel, and witness that change for himself. When he finally caught sight of the fields that were once his home, Samuel felt a wave of nostalgia mixed with pride. The crops were greener and more vibrant than he remembered, and the farm itself seemed more alive, better cared for. He parked the car next to the main house and stepped out, taking a deep breath of the fresh air he had missed so much. When Samuel finally approached Vincent, he needed a moment to take in the change before his eyes. The young man he had known, lost and insecure, seemed to have disappeared. In his place stood a stronger man with a firm posture and a determined gaze a clear reflection of the transformation he had undergone during that year on the farm. Vincent stood up, wiping his hands on his pants, and as he drew closer, Samuel almost didn't recognize him. Vincent, you're different, Samuel said, his voice choked with emotion he couldn't hide. He opened his arms and pulled his son into a strong embrace, feeling the newfound strength in Vincent's shoulders, a tangible symbol of his growth. Vincent returned the hug with equal intensity, realizing for the first time how much it meant to him to have his father there, seeing the man he had become. It's good to see you, Dad, Vincent murmured, stepping back just enough to look Samuel in the eyes. I have a lot to tell you, but I want to know, how are things? 
Is the process of recovering our assets moving forward? Samuel, touched by the genuine concern in his son's voice, paused, taking a deep breath to gather his thoughts. Well, Vincent, there's a lot to say about that, he began, feeling the weight of the truth he was about to reveal. He needed a moment to prepare for what would come next, knowing that the conversation they were about to have could change the course of their lives once again. Samuel took a deep breath, knowing the moment of truth had arrived. He looked at Vincent, now a transformed man, and felt a mix of pride and apprehension. Vincent, he began, his voice filled with sincerity, there's something I need to tell you. The truth is, all of this, the story about losing our assets was part of a plan I created. Vincent frowned, confusion evident in his eyes. A plan? What do you mean by that, Dad? Samuel stepped forward, trying to find the right words. The assets were never really lost. I created this situation to pull you out of the life that was destroying you, to bring you here, where you could learn the value of work, responsibility, real life. I wanted you to become the person I see in front of me now. Shock washed over Vincent. He took a step back, feeling as if the ground had been pulled out from under him. You deceived me? You did all this to teach me a lesson? His voice was filled with disbelief, mixed with deep pain. Vincent, I did it because I love you, Samuel responded, desperate for his son to understand his intentions. I saw the path you were on and knew that if I didn't do something drastic, I could lose you forever. But for Vincent, the revelation was a hard blow to endure. So all this time, I was here struggling to adjust, believing we were going through a real crisis, and it was all just a trick. The disappointment and anger in his voice were palpable. Samuel tried to get closer, reaching out to touch Vincent's shoulder, but his son pulled away, shaking his head. I need some time, Dad. I need to think. All of the is too much to process right now. Vincent turned, looking out at the vast fields he had started to consider his home. I'm going to stay here, he said, his voice firm despite the pain. The farm is where I found myself, where I became who I am now. But I need some distance from you, at least for a while. Samuel felt a tightness in his chest upon hearing those words, but he knew he couldn't force Vincent to understand or forgive at that moment. I understand, Vincent, he said, his voice sad but resigned. If that's what you want, I'll respect it. But know that I never intended to hurt you. With one last look full of hurt, Vincent walked away, leaving Samuel alone to deal with the weight of his choices. Samuel, feeling the depth of the pain he had caused, nodded slowly, accepting that his plan, though well-intentioned, had come at a high cost. He got into his car and drove away, leaving the farm, but with the hope that someday, Vincent could forgive him and understand why he had done it. In the days following Samuel's departure, Vincent felt lost, as if a storm of emotions had taken over his mind. He threw himself into the work on the farm, trying to find relief in the daily routine, but his father's revelation continued to torment him. Every task he performed, every moment of silence, made him reflect on the truth that had been revealed and what it meant for him. John, the caretaker, noticed Vincent's unease and without being intrusive, began to engage him in conversation at opportune moments. One afternoon, while the two were repairing the corral fence, John decided to approach the subject carefully. You've been quieter lately, Vincent, he commented, adjusting one of the boards with a hammer. Is something bothering you? Vincent hesitated for a moment, but the trust he had developed in John made him open up. It's about my father, he began his voice full of frustration. He manipulated me, made me believe we were ruined, all to force me to change. I don't know what to think about it. John nodded, understanding the complexity of the situation. That must have been a shock. I imagine you're feeling betrayed, but also confused, trying to understand his reasons. Vincent paused for a moment, looking out at the horizon. I was so focused on how deceived I felt that I couldn't see what he was trying to do he admitted with a heavy sigh. But at the same time, I can't ignore the fact that he acted without giving me a choice. John continued working, but his voice was filled with wisdom. Your father did what he thought was necessary to save you from a dangerous path. It wasn't the easiest choice, nor the most transparent, but he did it out of love, even if it was a distorted way of expressing it. 
In the days that followed, Vincent began to reflect on who he had been before arriving at the farm, on the person he was, and the choices he made. He realized with painful clarity that if his father had tried to talk to him back then, he probably wouldn't have listened. One morning as the two walked through the fields, Vincent confessed to John, I was stubborn, selfish. If my father had tried to convince me with words, I would have ignored him. I probably would have continued that empty life. John stopped and placed a hand on Vincent's shoulder, his eyes full of understanding. Acknowledging that is a sign that you've changed, Vincent. Sometimes the hardest lessons are the ones that truly transform us. Vincent looked up at the blue sky, feeling a light breeze on his face, as if a weight was slowly being lifted from his shoulders. I'm still upset with him, he admitted, but I'm beginning to understand that maybe there was no other way. And as difficult as it was, I think I needed to go through this to become who I am today. After weeks of introspection and sincere conversations with John, Vincent finally made a decision. He knew he couldn't continue avoiding his father, especially now that he better understood the reasons behind what had happened. He felt ready to face Samuel, with the intention of seeking understanding and perhaps reconciliation. On a clear morning, Vincent packed his things and prepared to leave the farm. Before leaving, he found John in the yard, where the caretaker was handling the morning chores. John, I think it's time for me to go back to the city, Vincent said, his voice firm but filled with contained emotions. John stopped what he was doing and looked at Vincent, a slight smile forming on his face. You've come a long way, Vincent. I'm proud of who you've become. Your father will be too when he hears what you have to say. Vincent nodded, feeling a lump in his throat. Thank you, John, for everything. You've helped me more than you know. It's been my pleasure, son, John replied giving Vincent a friendly pat on the shoulder. Now go and show your father the man you've become. Vincent left the farm with a lighter heart, but still a bit anxious about what was to come. The journey back to the mansion felt different this time. The thoughts that once tormented him were now more organized, and he felt more prepared for what he needed to do. When he arrived at the mansion, Vincent took a deep breath before entering. The house, which once felt oppressive, now had a different air, almost nostalgic. He found Samuel in the office, the same place where he had so often seen him absorbed in papers and meetings. Samuel looked up from what he was doing when he heard Vincent's footsteps. The surprise was quickly replaced by an expression of hope and apprehension. Vincent, he began, standing up slowly, unsure of what to expect. Dad, Vincent responded, his voice firm but with a touch of vulnerability. He took a few steps forward looking directly into Samuel's eyes. I've thought a lot about everything, about what you did, and why you did it. And now, I understand. I understand that you did what you thought needed to be done to save me from myself. Samuel felt the emotion rise to the surface, and before he could say anything, Vincent continued. It wasn't easy, and yes, I felt betrayed. But looking at the man I am now, I realized that maybe it was the only way. I wasn't capable of listening to you before. But now, I see that your choice was the best one. They stood in silence for a moment, the weight of Vincent's words hanging in the air. Then Samuel stepped forward and pulled Vincent into a tight embrace. I'm so sorry, son, Samuel murmured, his voice thick with emotion. I never wanted to hurt you. I just wanted to give you a chance to be the man I knew you could be. I know, Dad, Vincent replied, his voice muffled by the embrace. I'm sorry, too. We needed time, and I think now we're ready to move forward. They parted, both with tears in their eyes, but also with a sense of relief. Are you ready to come back? Samuel asked with an encouraging smile. To take your place by my side in the business? Vincent took a deep breath, feeling more prepared than ever. I'm ready, Dad. But I want to do it the right way, with everything I've learned on the farm. I want to bring that same dedication and humility to the business. Samuel smiled, proud. Then let's get started. There's a lot of work to be done, but now we'll do it together. Father and son, now reconciled and stronger than ever, left the office side by side, ready to face the future with a new perspective, building a solid relationship based on understanding, respect, and mutual love. 
The experience Vincent gained from managing the farm proved invaluable when he began working alongside his father in the family business. What could have been a challenging transition became an almost natural process. The months of hard work on the farm had shaped Vincent in ways he couldn't have foreseen. He had learned the importance of planning, managing resources efficiently, and above all, understanding the value of small daily achievements, lessons he now applied to the corporate world. On his first day in his new role, Vincent walked into Samuel's imposing office with a quiet confidence, one that came from genuine experience. Samuel observed his son, now more mature and centered, and felt a deep sense of pride. Ready to get started? Samuel asked, with a smile that mixed encouragement and curiosity. More than ever, Dad, Vincent replied without hesitation. I want to bring everything I learned on the farm to what we do here. I want to make this work the right way. Samuel nodded, seeing that his son was prepared for the challenge. He began introducing Vincent to the complexities of the business, from analyzing contracts to managing large teams. However, to Samuel's surprise, Vincent took on each new responsibility with an ease that could only be explained by the time he had spent managing the farm. In a meeting with the company's top executives, Vincent demonstrated an unexpected ability to lead. He spoke with clarity and conviction, addressing problems with a practical and innovative approach. When one of the directors presented a logistical challenge involving product distribution, Vincent suggested solutions that clearly reflected his farm experience. If we treat each step of the process as a cycle, like we do with crops, we can optimize our resources and reduce waste, he explained, surprising everyone with his insight. After the meeting, Samuel couldn't help but express his admiration. You've really adapted well, Vincent. It seems like you were prepared for this from the start. Vincent smiled, recalling his early weeks on the farm. The truth is, the farm taught me more than I could have imagined. I learned to see the value in every detail to be patient and to trust the process. And that, I think, is what makes all the difference here. With each new challenge, Vincent continued to grow. There was still much to learn, but the training he needed was minimal because the essence of hard work and the understanding of leadership dynamics were already deeply rooted in him. The farm, with its simplicity and daily lessons, had been the perfect training ground for the business world. Now, with his father by his side, Vincent was determined to take the company to new heights with the same dedication and humility he had found among the fields and barns. Now working side by side, father and son found a new rhythm of life, where work and family relationships intertwined harmoniously. The time that once seemed scarce and filled with absences was replaced by moments of true connection. Samuel and Vincent, besides being business partners, were companions who had traversed a difficult path to rediscover each other. I have to admit, it's good to have you here, Vincent, Samuel said one day as they were in a strategic meeting. I never imagined we would work so well together. Vincent smiled, looking at his father with respect and affection. Neither did I, Dad, but I think we needed all that time to understand what really matters. The absence that once hung over them like a shadow was finally dissipated, Vincent, now a fully realized man, valued the simple things in life, lessons he had learned on the farm and continued to apply in every aspect of his existence. Although the business demanded much of his time, he never forgot his roots, where he had found his true purpose. Whenever he could, Vincent returned to the farm, walking through the fields that had shaped his character and worldview. He breathed in the fresh air, feeling the same peace that had transformed him. This place will always be special to me, he commented during one of his visits while talking to John. It was here that I learned who I really am. And at the end of each day, when the work was done and the silence of the night fell, father and son would sit together, sometimes on the mansion's porch, other times at the edge of the fields, talking about the past, the present, and their dreams for the future. The bond they had rebuilt was unbreakable, forged through challenge and mutual understanding. Samuel looked at Vincent and saw the man he had become, still connected to his roots, but with a renewed vision for the future. And Vincent, in turn, looked at Samuel with gratitude, knowing that the journey they had traveled together, though difficult, had led them to the place where they finally belonged. And so, life moved forward, 
no longer marked by absence, but filled with the presence of something much more valuable, the love, respect, and understanding that father and son had cultivated, like a bountiful harvest that grew and flourished with each passing day. Want access to more stories like this? Click the link in the pinned comment below and find out how.